Cyborg here at the StarCityGames.com Modern Open in Columbus, part of the SCG Tour, brought to you by Ultimate Guard. Here with the Player Spotlight with Jeff Hoagland, number one SCG Tour Player of the Year leaderboard in a tight race with Tom Ross. It's been a lot of back and forth these last, last few weeks. You guys played on camera yesterday. You're both in contention for top eight. This is where it's all heating up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's literally going to come down to this last Invitational, I think. I think uh, good finishes here by either of us, and then we've got one more open in Knoxville next weekend, but the Invitational is a lot of points at the end of the season, and that's really what it's going to come down to. You're going to have a little chance to make up more ground on Tom next weekend. He's playing in, like, the Epic Worlds or some sort of yeah, he's tournament. Take, he's taking a weekend off. I don't, I don't really do weekends off. Yeah. You have been here since week one. You had one tournament off where yep. you uh, had a vacation in Hawaii, yep. so that's okay. You're allowed to do that. Yep. Uh, but talk about the Player of the Year race, what it means to you. You've been seriously coming at the SCG Tour all year. You've had some of the most consistent results of anyone. What's it mean to you? Yeah. So when they announced the structure for this year, last year, I talked to my wife and it was just like, whatever I have a good invitational finish at, I'm going to take a run at that season and make sure we lock up that season invite. And then I happened to top 16 that first invitational in Vegas. And I was like, all right, I guess this is it. And then I top aided the first two opens this year with Kiki Cord, and mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the season, I was looking at the standings, just like, "Huh, this Player of the Year thing might actually be like something that could happen." Yeah. I, I definitely wasn't on the board at the start, but like heading into season two, I was like, "Well, because I won season one, I had free open entry," and I was just like, "Well, I might as well keep showing up, right?" And we had some more good, solid, consistent finishes, and just been slowly pushing through. Right, and of course, Player of the Year comes with free entry and three buys next year, which I'm sure you wouldn't mind. That's so many buys, Nick. And, and the equity on the buys is something that a lot of people, they're, they're so much more valuable on this tour because everyone doesn't have them. Like showing up to a Grand Prix where like a third or half of the room has some number of buys, they're worth less. Mm -hmm. Here, they're very valuable. Okay, and you've been doing this a lot with your modern finishes. And you've been doing it a lot with Kiki Cord. Most of your success at the beginning of the year was with that deck. Yep. You kind of strayed from it uh, middle season two, late or early season three, but you're back to it now. Yep. You won the classic last weekend. Yep. You're in contention for top eight this weekend. What's changed? Or you just kind of fell back into your old ways? Yeah, uh, I'm the type of person where I play magic to kind of uh, explore and be kind of creative. I like to kind of work outside the box, and Chord's a great deck to do that. And I kind of went a little bit too far off the deep end with it in the <laughs> middle and got. Uh, we played some wacky four-color control decks and other things like that. Had some like top 32 and top 64 finishes, but nothing quite as consistent as this good, just pure value chord deck that I'm back to playing today. Okay. And anyone who's kind of seen your stream knows you're one to kind of break into the new decks, try every new card when it comes out. Yep. Uh, talk about your stream, because you've been doing it for a couple it's years now. It's yep. been growing. You've got the sponsors and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we do. Uh, what we do is a little bit different, actually similar to the SCG Versus series. We record Paper Magic every week on my live Twitch stream, and then I archive it to my YouTube channel. Um, you know, people are always like, oh, how can I find out what, you, what, you, what you are thinking about? The deck that I won the Classic with last weekend, we played on stream the week before, card for card in the main deck. Like, mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't have a bunch of secrets. We're just, like, we're having a good time and trying to figure out new sweet things to play and we do it live for everyone okay now as someone who's been going in on the player of the year race and you mentioned you know you, you told your wife you know i'm going to kind of do this you're also you know hashtag mtg dad how's life you know with children balancing everything you know all the things you do with magic yeah the the one question i always give people is man your wife lets you do a lot of stuff <laughs> and uh she's a very wonderful woman but you know just like everything in a marriage like we have to both be on board. She, I, I, she doesn't let me do stuff. We work on things together, and she has things that she likes to do. And it's all about balance and things like that. Make sure we have plenty of family time on top of the work and travel. Mm -hmm. And have you got her into magic? I know she does uh, some of the hex stuff with you online as well. Yeah, she played magic a little bit uh, when I was when we did like F and M and stuff like that. But she uh, isn't super into like the big groups of people and tournaments like this. So the the digital stuff has been more her cup of tea. She really she played a lot of hex. All right, so what do you do when you get time outside of magic and family and travel and all that? What else do you do? I know you uh, used to do some, some teaching. Yeah, I have, uh, my, I have a master's in mathematics, so uh, every once in a while I'll see a posting for a class that they're looking to fill at one of the local colleges, and I'll, I'll pick that up. I like uh, teaching an introductory statistics class this semester. That's always a good time. It's kind of neat to see how other people think about probability and statistics because um, the people that like tend to play magic, they're more 
apt at that, and it's interesting to see how other people kind of think through things like that. Okay, as a kind of a notable brewer and someone who plays a lot on the SG Tour, what would you tell people who are kind of trying to break into the, into the tour and people that kind of like to experiment as well? You know, um, do you have any advice for them? Some of the best testing you will get is just coming out and playing. People always say, how do you, how do you start playing? You just do that. You, you show up, you register for the events, you want to practice before them, and you can practice, 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 but when it comes down to it, getting used to like the pressure of playing for high stakes is only going to happen when you're actually playing for higher stakes. So just get out there, play your, your local events, your 1Ks, your IQs, all of those type of events, and you know, the Open comes within three or four hours of you, drive out to it, get a group of friends together and travel. Okay, well, you're already qualified for the Players' Championship, so it's going to be your second of those. Excited? I am. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to improve on the top 16 finish from the first one. Right. Top 16, strong finish. <laughs> Could have done a little better. <laughs> my, uh, my standard deck was less than optimal at that first one. Okay. What are your <laughs> predictions for Player of the Year race? What's it really going to come down to? Um, the fact that I was a little surprised that Carpenter wasn't here this weekend because with an open spike or two, he could have possibly been in talks and Lissette's not here either. So it's pretty much just Ross and I at this point. So we'll see where this open finishes. If I'm six points up on Tom and if he gains ground here, I've got Knoxville next weekend. And then, like I said, ultimately it's going to be who can spike the Invitational if one of us can do that. All right. Well, you guys have given us a great ride. You've been exciting to watch all year. We wish you the best of luck. Going to see you at the Players' Championship. Thanks for joining me here on the sideboard. Stay tuned to StarCityGames.com all weekend long for the action here in Columbus.